Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chun Tan from Chinese Academy of Science. Uh, at the college, the course of this uh, presentation, Xue Jun Zhang from Chinese Academy of Science as well. Uh, the title is the development of a hydrologic monitoring and the seasonal forecast system for China. At the start from the background, the hydrological extremes are frequent and constant in China. We showed some examples uh, for the great flooding in the Yangtze River in 1998 that caused much economic damage. And uh, in, the, uh, in 2012, the rainfall storm in Beijing city uh, took um, about 80 percent of life. And the severe drought in southwest China in uh, 2010. Uh, just, just like many other countries uh, yeah, or everywhere in the world, the hydraulic extremes, uh, uh, it will be a problem. So in order to cope with uh, those extremes, what scientists uh, we can do, of course, we are thinking about uh, getting like a monitoring system and a prediction system. Uh, in China, we, the National Climate uh, Center of China is providing the climate monitoring and the prediction of China. So the they are able to uh, get uh, this kind of uh, meteorological variables in a near real-time manner. Um, but uh, to date, we don't have a large-scale hydrogen monitoring system yet. Uh, there will be a question if we have the climate monitoring system, why we still need the hydrologic monitoring system there. Uh, I think there are a couple of reasons for that. Uh, for example, we have uh, this kind of meteorological uh, uh, monitoring system. It can capture well with uh, this uh, meteorological drought in southwest China. However, if we look close to this figure uh, and uh, at this location, it is at a venue. So uh, even though at the center of the Delta, you know, uh, uh, there's still the soil moisture is high, and the people can take the stream flow for irrigation. So the cropland can sustain the during the drought. And uh, also for the climate system, uh, mountain system can capture this kind of typhoon even very well, and we can see this kind of typhoon is coming. Uh, however, if we look closely, uh, uh, for the only a very limited area, we do have this uh, flooding risk. Uh, so that's the difference between the hydrologic mountain and the climate mountain. Climate mountain, they, it can give a large scale change. However, uh, the ground details, uh, it, it, it usually is not of the ground details. So we need to build a hydrologic mountain system for China. This is, shows how the model can work. Uh, if there is a rainfall um, extreme, the location of rainfall extreme actually may not be the same as the location of, of its hydrologic extreme. We all know the, the, the catchment can accumulate the rainfall into the railway, so uh, there will be a gap between this kind of um, um, meteorological extreme and the hydrologic extreme. So we need a model to build the connection be, between them. Uh, we have developed a large-scale hydrogen mountain and forecast system for China. Uh, here's the basic logic. We take the meteorological mountain and data from the uh, climate mountain system and put it into the hydrogen models and run the model to, uh, uh, to get the hydrogen mountain. So we will get the initial condition for future forecast. Uh, but before I talk more detail about uh, the new real-time monitoring, I, I think we need to have a long-term model simulation first. Why we need this? Uh, be, uh, because our target is for the new real-time monitoring, but why we need a long-term model simulation? There are two reasons for that. Uh, one is uh, now we, we use the model. We need to make sure the model can work well in this region. So we need a long-term simulation for model calibration and validation. Another reason is we need a reference for the current assessment. Uh, uh, when we uh, say this region has a 
risk of flooding or the drought, uh, we can decide to determine this from the uh, absolute values of discharge or stream flow. Actually, what we do is compare the current state uh, to the historic data. Then, if this data is consistent, then we can uh, determine uh, uh, the current state is extremely high in the past three of decades or extremely uh, uh, dry in, uh, in the past decades. So firstly, we produced a, a 30 year data set of hydrology flux and states in China. Uh, what we do is we, we get the meteorological forcing from Chinese um, meteorology uh, uh, Chinese meteorological administration. We interpret the data into a uh, court degree and we put the force into the weak hydrologic model and we uh, carefully calibrate the model against the hydrologic observations. So we got this kind of long, dat long term data set we call it IGS and R data set. Uh, we mm, uh, validated this model in a, in a 20 years period when we have the ground observations. This we compare the uh, IGS uh, on our uh, stream flow with uh, the global data set from Princeton University. So we can see the black line shows the observation and the blue uh, one shows uh, the um, estimate from Princeton University and the net line shows our estimate. Uh, it is not surprising our data performs well uh, in China because we use more than the observations in China. Uh, we also evaluate the uh, the downward short wave radiation, the left column shows uh, the estimate from our model, and the center column shows a data set from ITP, Chinese Academy of Science. The, uh, the ITP data set, they use them much more ground short wave radiation observation and combined with the remote sensing data. So we believe that data will have a better estimate of short wave radiation. So we compare them and the difference actually is small, so our model can well uh, capture the, the, uh, the, the uh, they produce the short wave radiation. Uh, also in winter, get some big difference. However, in summer, in the season, we really care about uh, the difference is small. And we also assess the uh, population pattern and compare the open transpiration pattern with a remote sensing base, the estimate uh, from Princeton University. Actually, the pattern agree with each other very well. But if we calculate the relative difference, the relative difference is small in the eastern China, however, it's large in the west. Uh, there are two reasons. One reason is uh, uh, in Western China, it's a, it, your population is small. So when we calculate the relative difference, it usually uh, small difference makes the large relative difference. Um, another reason is in Western China, we don't have much um, uh, ground observations. So the data quality may be a problem in that side. We also assess the, the soil moisture. Uh, we cannot compare the soil moisture the, the station directly, so we compare the uh, auto correlations of soil moisture. It shows the memory of the soil, soil moisture. Uh, it, uh, the model estimate agrees with the observation in eastern China and central China. However, in um, northwest China, uh, the model shows the long memory. However, the observation shows much shorter memory. Uh, I think it is also the problem uh, because um, we don't have much observation in the north, north China, uh, in the West China. We compare uh, the model similarly, uh, similarly the slow curve with the uh, satellite-based um, slow curve observation. So the model can produce the slow curve well. Uh, so we get a um, long-term um, hydrological simulation. I think it can reasonably capture the hydrological flux and stage in China. Uh, based on this long-term data set, we, we are going to do the hydrological monitoring. Uh, in that case, we need the new real-time forcing. Uh, now, we are not able to get the new real-time uh, observation, uh, precipitation observation from ground uh, stations yet. So we decided to use the, the satellite, the trim their time precipitation and uh, input the model. The issue is how to make them consistent. 
This is uh, slide shows the comparison bec between the satellite and the ground observation. So uh, actually, the data is not consistent. So the treatment data always always made the precipitation uh, at all those uh, large river basin in China. Uh, that means still we are not able to directly compare the near real time estimates to the historic uh, estimates. So we use a simple adjustment method, uh, we call it the CDF mapping. Uh, uh, the basic idea is in the training period, we found the difference between the these two data sets and find their relationship and then we use this relationship to adjust the, the, real, the real time precipitation. Uh, I'm not going to go detail but, um, uh, have about this method. Uh, for more detail, please visit our poster which will be presented tomorrow. So this shows the performance of this adjustment. Uh, before adjustment, uh, and, and there are large difference between the ground-based and uh, the satellite estimate. After adjustment, uh, all the uh, grades goes to the one to one nine. And we also compare the total rain, uh, rainfall volume at the 10 largest rail basin. Uh, so before adjustment, uh, the, if we use the satellite data, it will always make the rainfall, um, but after adjustment, it will agree with the observation-based estimate. We compare the hydrograph uh, we, uh, at the basin. Uh, of course, um, uh, before adjustment, uh, if we directly use the satellite data, actually we, we will get a much higher uh, high, uh, stream flow that will cause much more uh, force element of flooding risk. So after adjustment, it will uh, agree much better with the observations. Uh, for the high flow in flooding season, uh, 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 the, the, it is the same. You, if we use the satellite data directly, it will get a, uh, much more high flow, and after adjustment, uh, it will be much close to the observations. Here shows the example of the hydrologic mountain during a typhoon event. So, uh, just in 2013, uh, before uh, Typhoon Haiyan hit the South China, so uh, at the beginning, they, uh, they, we found the high risk of the uh, South, Southern Island. And the, during the event, uh, in the large part of the South China will have high risk of flooding. Uh, and uh, after the Typhoon event, the they, 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 uh, flooding risk is gone. So here is the summary. We have developed a long-term hydrologic data set in China, which provides a baseline for real-time real monitoring. We have established a satellite-assisted hydrologic monitoring system in China. This system may provide useful information for disaster mitigation and the water resource management for China. Uh, there's certainly uh, some future work we can do. Uh, uh, for the reason of population, we did not consider it in, uh, in our study. However, in China, we, we have many da big dams. Uh, this were, should be considered in the future. And basically, we haven't done the focus yet. So the, for the next step, we will need to use ESP or climate forcing uh, to, uh, for the uh, forecast. Yeah, that's all. Thank you.